Thank you. May God bless you all, and may God protect his troops and all those standing watch for America. We have so much to do. It's within our capacity to do it. We just have to remain steadfast. Steadfast. We will complete our mission, and we will continue after our troops have withdrawn. A feeble and crumbling presidency. That, my friends, is the overwhelming assessment of Biden's speech last night. In this video, we're going to look at the disastrous attempt by Biden to address the death of over a dozen U.S. military personnel in Afghanistan. We're going to see how pundits both here in the States and across the pond in Britain assess the speech as an unmitigated disaster. And stick with me to the very end of this video where we're going to see how more and more Democrats are recognizing that this indeed is a turning point and that both Biden and Kamala are dragging the entire party down with them. You are not going to want to miss this. Greetings, everyone, patriots all across the globe. Dr. Steve here with you. Great to be with you as always. I am your daily fake news antidote as each and every day I provide patriotic analysis to help you to think better so you can feel better in these crazy and turbulent times. So if you haven't done so, you know what to do. Make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button. Before I begin, I am calling all fighting patriots out there. One week from today, conservative patriots across the world are gathering together for our new conservative patriot virtual event to learn how to lead their families and communities to freedom without sacrificing their values, beliefs, and God-given rights. There's never been a better time to join together as a new conservative patriot community, especially because there are only a very few tickets left. My team has told me we're almost sold out of spots. There are only about 130 tickets remaining for general admission. So claim your spot right now by clicking on the link in the description below. But they're going fast. If there's still tickets when you get there, you're in luck, gang. So hurry. I hope you join me next Friday and Saturday for an event like nothing else where I show you the tangible steps for how to fight for freedom and take back the customs cultures and traditions that we love but you need to hurry and reserve one of those 130 tickets so click on that link right now all right gang let's dive right in here joe biden addressed the nation last night in the wake of the terrorist attacks uh, against u.s soldiers and civilians held up at the kabul airport in afghanistan as i'm sure you know by now but the latest death toll uh, right now as we speak has written, risen to more than 100 people, 13 U.S. service members, 10 Marines, two Army soldiers, and one Navy corpsman. The true death toll is expected to climb even higher as they assess the full damage of the twin coordinated bombings. Biden's speech, by all accounts, uh, that is by those who are not rapidly partisan leftists, his speech was simply a disaster. I mean, in fact, the whole handling of the situation was a disaster, if you can believe it. The Biden regime was silent for over five hours following the Kabul attack. There was no communication through social media channels. There was no formal statement, nothing. It was utterly bizarre. And then, and then, he, when he did come out to speak, well, let's just say at best it was underwhelming, and at worst, it was frankly an embarrassment. And that's not my assessment that's the assessment of innumerable pundits, both here and across the pond in Britain. The British political scholar Matthew Goodwin tweeted out, I find Biden's speeches very bizarre, and I suspect I'm not the only one. This is a dismal speech for the moment America finds itself in. Beers Morgan tore into Biden, tweeting out, President Biden looks and sounds tired, weak, and defeated. What a rambling, stumbling, dreadful speech. And Niall Gardner, Summed, the, summed up the sentiments of many of us when he tweeted out, Joe Biden looks confused, angry, incoherent, and clueless as he speaks to the American people. He's no Kennedy, Reagan, or FDR. His presidency is a disaster of epic proportions. Even the ultra leftists over at the Washington Post couldn't run cover this guy. I mean, recognizing the obvious struggle it was for Biden to even appear remotely competent in the midst of all of this. But it wasn't just his rambling and incoherent banter that was so hard to watch. It wasn't just his clearly noticeable physical feebleness and imbecility. But when it came time for questions, he made a bizarre admission. Take a look at this. Ladies and gentlemen, they gave me a list here. 
The first person I was instructed to call on was Kelly O'Donnell of NBC. They gave me a list? They gave me a list on who to call? So this is scripted kabuki theater. Who the hell is instructing the president of the United States? What the hell is this all about? And of course he went on to call the ultra leftist Kelly O'Donnell from NBC. And then another reporter from the Associated Press, who I was glad to see was utterly ridiculed for his ridiculous puffball question that invoked the death of Biden's son. I mean, the Kabuki theater here is just growing so old. And then to make matters even worse, there were revelations Biden made that were actually quite shocking. Take, for example, Biden's distressing and frankly revolting, well, semi-admission that U.S. officials actually gave the Taliban a list of names and information about American citizens, green card holders, and Afghan allies who are right now in Afghanistan. Politico broke the story, and when Biden was asked about it, well, let's just say he didn't deny it. Now, of course, the horror in this self-admission that critics, of course, fear is that this is going to be a ready-made kill list for the Taliban, particularly among the Afghan citizens that have been working so closely with American troops over the years. Furthermore, Biden did, in fact, reveal that Americans are indeed going to be left behind. There's simply no way that all Americans in Afghanistan will be evacuated by the withdrawal deadline, which is just four days away from today. And then when he fielded a question from Peter Ducey of Fox News about whether he takes responsibility for what happened to those soldiers and citizens, Biden said he did. And then he went on to blame Trump, again, as if signing a peace deal for withdrawal and the total and complete botching of that withdrawal were the same thing. And then Biden got belligerent with Ducey and he started asking him questions and Ducey didn't back down. And so Biden just seemed to crumble. He clutched the leather folder of his remarks and notes and he just bowed down in frustration as Ducey continued to ask him follow-up questions. Really, it was a very, very telling moment for sure. Biden did have his defenders. Malcolm Nance of MSNBC tweeted out perhaps the most ridiculous statement imaginable regarding the speech. Quote, 20 years. FYI, there have been terrorist suicide bombers killing civilians nearly daily in Afghanistan. This isn't new. It's why we're leaving. Hashtag deal with it. Hashtag deal with it. That's your modern day Democrat, your modern day left wing. Oh, and you'll be glad to know, you'll be assured, you will be assured to know that his military parents were getting calls throughout the day that their sons would never be returning home. You'll be glad to know that Nancy Pelosi spent the day celebrating Women's Equality Day. Isn't that wonderful? Afghanistan is burning and Nancy's eating ice cream together with all the liberated women in America and around the world. Thank God for this permanent political class, our credentialed class. What on earth would we do without them? Well, the good news is that it does appear that more and more Democrats are realizing that the Biden and Harris freak show is indeed dragging them all down. As we talked about in our video earlier this week that you definitely want to watch, check that one out, Biden's poll numbers are in a free fall. He has collapsed to just 41% approval, 55% disapproval, and that was just earlier this week. But those numbers are frankly spectacular compared to Kamala's, who can't even break 40%. She's at 37% approval. What that means, of course, is that if the Democrats were to replace Biden with Kamala, they would be replacing a ridiculously unpopular president, ironically, with an even more ridiculously unpopular president. The whole party is going down as we speak. Even Tucker Carlson thinks we may indeed be at a turning point here where the rot that is our credential class has been exposed for all to see. This may indeed be the time where a massive rejection of our permanent political class is at hand. Regardless, one thing is for certain. These last two weeks have been an unmitigated tragedy for this country, for our allies in Europe, and indeed for the people of Af Afghanistan who are bumbling excuse of a president shamelessly abandoned. There is no question that this time period we are living through will go down in history as one of the worst foreign policy disasters of any American administration in history. We can only pray that this will be a once and for all wake up call for a burgeoning electoral majority who finally, finally vote these credentialed clowns out of their positions of privilege and power and never, ever 
let them back in again. Now, before we go, you will definitely want to check out my latest video. I just uploaded on the breaking news of the suicide bombings because there I get into a fascinating article published by the intellectual godfather of globalism who admits that the fall of Kabul represents nothing less than the fall of the globalist political order itself. You are not going to want to miss it. It's a shocking admission. So make sure to click on the link and I'll see you over there. God bless.